You know, Obama years ago said fatherless families are a problem, and he gave statistics. He was praised. Tony Dungy, uh, about a year ago, came on our show after he had been crushed. Tony's a friend. After he had been crushed for saying the same thing about Obama, you've been very outspoken. I've been very outspoken because the numbers tell you fatherless families don't get it done for their kids. Not at all, man. It's a, it, it's a very, very harsh reality that this nation is living with now, man, when you look out uh, and you see the most hard-hit kids don't have dads in their homes, man, and then you see the results of it. Um, but people want to pacify these children. Um, they don't want to stand for uh, obedience anymore. Discipline is being pulled out of every part of our society now. Uh, and it's, it really is sad. And, you know, for me as a former pro football player, uh, you know, it's really sad when I start to see that breakdown in the sports uh, where you actually start seeing so many athletes take this this new soft, woke mentality towards everything versus the disciplinary approach that we all took to get where we are today. Uh, and so I, I don't know, man, I just, you know, it's disappointing every time I go in and walk into a juvenile facility or a prison uh, or go help the kids that we work with, man, the reality that no matter what I tell them today, the they're going to go home and they're not going to have that father. They're not going to have that disciplinary environment. So it's like we're starting over from scratch every day. You know, Jack, one of the things that I've talked about, and I'm curious your thoughts on this. You mentioned discipline, you know. Um, teachers, my parents were teachers. Gary, Indiana. My dad was a principal at Gary uh, uh, Public School. I guess not a Gary Public School, public school in Gary. My mother, a school teacher, and there was real discipline. You had real opportunity, real discipline. There was a teach of, of respect. Where do you think we flipped the switch? Like, when did it happen that teachers now, their hands are tied, teachers are being assaulted in classroom? When did all this shift? You know, back, I remember back in like 86, um, I think I was in the first grade. And I remember they, it was like, the whole school was like, hey, they're going to take the paddle out. And at six years old, I remember them thinking to myself, oh man, they, we can't get paddled anymore in school. And so the second that they did that, you know, and then simultaneously they stripped, you know, any mention of God from anything that started to break down a generation. Um, I didn't really feel it as much in my generation because, you know, I grew up in a time where you still get smacked upside the head uh, if you did something stupid. Uh, you know, you were more afraid of the police department calling your, your dad or your mom than you were uh, going to jail. And so. I think when we started to remove that that fear of God, that, that that fear of discipline, and people run from the word fear. Oh, you shouldn't fear God. Oh, you shouldn't you shouldn't fear your parents. Yes, you should. That fear is is based in love because that means that you respect them. And so when you remove that respect, and that's what Obama was saying, that's what Dungey was saying. But now it's like only certain men are willing to continue. Um, to talk about that, you'll never hear Obama make a speech like that again. And that's unfortunate. Right now is when we need him. The nation probably needs him more now than it ever has needed him, particularly as a as a, a man of color uh, that can go and speak into these kids as we see him harassing our streets in Chicago and Baltimore and all over the country. You know, we're seeing them younger and younger going to prison. I was in a prison yesterday. Um, in the panhandle of Florida, met a guy who's been in prison since he was 14 years old, and he's over 55 now. Think about that, man. Like, we got kids being locked up for the rest of their lives, but we have these politicians that have uh, been blessed with this ability to speak into these children, and they're not doing it. And that goes for athletes, man. Why is it considered? Because I would argue that white kids without fathers get in trouble mm. and the numbers bear it out at a, at right. a far greater rate. Why is it considered racist? Is saying it's racist just an easy take? Yeah, of course it is because it, it, it goes at the emotional fabric uh, of our nation right now, right? We've created a victim uh, culture where kids are told, man, you tell a kid from five, six, seven years old, 
um, that, you know, this color of skin means this and that color of skin, uh, skin means this. And that one, you know, is is superior over the other. And one has been oppressed over time. You start getting that into a kid's psyche. You Society can use that for any excuse. I mean, I was listening to the transportation secretary the other day talking about the roads and streets are racist. I mean, this is think about that. You know, I remember growing up, the the, sec, the the secretary of transportation for the U.S. government. That's a big deal. You look up to these people. And to hear him saying nonsense like that, imagine how that's going to continue to snowball uh, in the mentality of our kids. That's what we're creating right now. It's so easy. That means you, you don't have to be accountable no matter what job you're doing. Oh, man, I, I tried to do it, but it's racist. You know, it's like it's become uh, this this stigma that uh, that that really is manipulation when you look at it. It is manipulation. It, it, I think it's manipulation. And I think it's pandering when I see Buddha Judge do those things. No doubt, he's he's pandering because you know, and 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 unfortunately, the reality is the politics uh, right now on the left. And listen, the left and right has issues. I'm not here saying one 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 is is great and the other one is not. But I know one thing that um, politicians on the left right now uh, they have a safe haven. And their safe haven is race. If they talk about skin color, they can run into that box. So it doesn't matter the fact that, you know, our our, our airlines and our transportation sector and, and our and our imports and exports coming in and out of this com- country uh, is the worst that it's been. I know in my lifetime. Uh, and so the, the job that you do doesn't matter anymore because you can just go straight to the race debate uh, instead of actually honing in on the root cause issues. Um, that are affecting the the people of this nation. That's what's so sad, man. You're an NFL player, ex-player. You're an NFL ex-captain. How does that equate into sports? It, it equates into sports deeply. I mean, you see uh, the mentality of the, of the kids on the field. You know, I love sports. I, I I played. I actually played three sports in college. I played a little baseball. Um, had a cup of coffee there, but I I, I ran track. Um, record holder in track, and I played football uh, in college. And during those times, man, it, it was a completely different reality. I, you know, kids were at the games. I don't even like my kids watching some of these athletes today um, just because of the things they say, the culture that they've created around them, the music that you hear, even when you go uh, to games and, 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 you, and you listen to the words that are coming out of the mouths uh, of the people that are that are that are producing these songs, so the whole culture is embraced nothing um, but immorality and unrighteousness. Man, you just don't you don't see enough purity uh, in sports anymore, and I think that uh, is a direct reflection uh, of our leaders of the politics that we're choosing. You know, whether we're talking about you know girls and boys and and men playing against women and people advocating for that and recreating what righteousness means, re- recreating what equality means, and really going against everything that this nation was founded on. You know, the American dream for a lot of people has changed. Uh, and, and, and I think that that's where we're going to pay, a, a, pay a, a really grim price uh, if we don't get back on track. Hey, thanks for watching Don't At Me with me. Dan Dockets, make sure to like, subscribe, or click the notification bell for more of my beautiful face. Check out my full show to my right, or watch this other video. See ya.